welcome to today's class. For today, we're looking at electrostatics. Now, let's start with a brief definition. By definition, um, the, the term there is electrostatics, right? Electrostatics is actually a compound term that consists of two words, electro and statics. Electro talks about electron or perhaps charges. Why statics talks about something not moving, all right? That's really just uh, a particular position. If I combine these two definitions, we can define electrostatics as the study of charges and charge system at rest. That's a basic definition for electrostatics. Now, aside that, there's a broader view of electrostatics. And in this broader view, uh, we can consider electrostatics as considering charges that are not just at rest but also moving with a small velocity or perhaps moving slowly. So in the broader view, electrostatics is, is not just about charges at rest but also charges moving with little or um, of course with little velocity or perhaps moving slowly. So that's a uh, the idea of electrostatics. All right. Aside this, uh, let's look at some of the laws of electrostatics. Look at some of the laws. Some of the laws of electrostatics. So basically, there are two laws of electrostatics. The first law states that like charges. Light charges repel while on light charges attract. Alright, so this becomes the first law of electrostatics. Light charges repel and on light charges attract. So if I have a positive and a positive charge being brought to each other, they will repair, right? This is how we show repulsion, right? They will repair. This is showing repulsion. So you can see here that the same charge, so they will repair. Similarly to negative charges, if I bring two negative charges, they will repair as shown like this. But if I bring a light and an unlight charge, let's say a positive charge on course and a negative charge, an attraction will take place. You have this, will connect like this. So you have um, an attraction. But there's usually an attraction between unlight charges, positive, negative. And of course, a repulsion between light charges, either positive, positive, or negative, negative. All right. So this is um, the first law of electrostatics. All right. Um, important to note is the fact that when it comes to what I do is that my direction is from positive to negative. Very important to note. So that's the first law of electrostatics. Um, the second law. The second law of electrostatics, we also call Coulomb's law. The second law of electrostatics is called, also known as Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction between two charges, let's say Q1 and Q2, is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart, all right? Um, in mathematical terms, let's say I have two charges. Let's say Q1 and Q2. And let's say these two charges are separated by a distance r. Uh, let me do the diagram to illustrate this. So I have charge 1. So I have charge Q1 and charge Q2 here and here. This becomes R. Alright, so let's say we have 
two charges Q1 and Q2 separated by distance r. We said from Coulomb's law that the force of attraction between the two charges, uh, we are doing that. So we are saying that the force of attraction, of course, we can also say or repulsion because if the charges are the same, they will repel. If they are opposite, they will attract. So we said the force of, att of attraction or repulsion, or repulsion between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges. Here I have Q1 and Q2. So it becomes product means multiplication. It becomes Q1 times Q2. That's your first equation. And we said it is also inversely proportional. To show inversely proportionality, inverse proportionality, we'll take this as 1 all over R. Now, it's inversely proportional to not just the distance apart, but the square of the distance apart. So very important. This becomes square. So this is Coulomb's law in mathematical expression. The force of attraction between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance apart. Combining one and two, combining one and two, if I combine one and two, I have that M is directly proportional to Q1, Q2. Q1, Q2 means Q1 times Q2 and inverse proportional to R squared. So I have this. Alright, combine all of this, it means that F is directly proportional to these two goes to the numerator that gives you q1 q2 all over this one that gives you r squared so i have this and of course again from mathematical approach we know that to pick up my proportionality sign i will introduce an equal to and a constant so in this case, f, this will now be replaced by an equal to and a constant. The constant in this case is k. So k, q1, q2, all over r squared. So I have this expression. All right, so what next? Um, let's get the s sign of k. Or let's, get, let's make k subject of the formula. This becomes all over 1. So this times 1 gives you k q1 q2 equal to this times gives you f times r squared. That's f r squared. So I have this. To make this what we do, divide here by q1 q2 divide here by q1 q2. From here we have that k. This cancels this. This cancels this. Is equal to f r squared all over q1 q2. All right. Let's get the SI unit of the constant k. The SI unit of the constant k will be this is force. Force is measured in newton. This is distance of separation between the charges, and distance is measured in meters. So r is measured in meters. But observe that r is being squared, so it becomes meter squared all over q is char. Is char. char is measured in coulomb, becomes coulomb, becomes coulomb. That's for this times another coulomb for this. This is equal to Newton meter squared all over coulomb squared. So we have this. From this, k is equal to if I try to write this in index form, this becomes Newton meter square. Newton meter square times 1 all over coding square. It's still correct because Newton meter square times 1 gives you Newton meter square all over coding square. This in index form becomes Newton meter square. And then this. So hence, the SI unit for the constant. Of proportionality is Newton meter square per column square. Now that's what to note. Also note that
Alright, so also know that the value of k is equal to, it has a, it has a constant value as 9 times 10 over 9. If I keep it, it becomes Newton meter square. The economic square. So this becomes the value of k. Also, experimentally, the relationship between k and permittivity of free space is given by of the half. You can say you can express k as being equal to 1 all over 4 pi e naught. We are e naught is equal to a constant of proportionality called permittivity of free space. So you have it. So k is equal to 1, that means k is equal to 1 over 4 pi k naught and the value is 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton meter square per square. Alright, so having said this, if I should write this equation, this equation now, in terms of this, it means that f is equal to k q1 q2 all over r square. That's equal to or k we said we said k itself or perhaps to simplify it. Shift k out of this it becomes k times q1 q2 all over r square. We said k is 1 over 4 pi e naught. So f is now equal to k 1 all over 4 pi e naught. So k times q1 q2 all over r square. Combine this so you can see f is equal to 1 times q1 q2 gives you q1 q2 all over this times this. 4 pi e naught r squared. So we have this. Alright, so it becomes um, the formula for the frictional force. F is equal to q1 q2 all over 4 pi e naught r squared. Of course, it's in Newton. So let's look at some sample problems of um, electrostatics from what you've done so far. The first one says the force of attraction between two charges Q1 and Q2 separated by distance 2R is given by dash. Alright, uh, let's get this done. So the solution. Uh, they gave us they gave us uh, the charges as Q1 and Q2. Uh, let's say this point here. Yeah? Give us this as Q1 and Q2. And they said separated by distance of 2R. So from here to here is 2R. So to find the expression for the force of attraction between these two charges. Well, simply enough, we say F is equal to K times product of charges Q1, Q2 all over square of distance apart. This is a part of this becomes 2R. Please all square. So this square affects everything here. So hence F is equal to K Q1 Q2 all over. So this square goes to 2. That gives you 2 squared plus square goes to R. That becomes R squared. So F is equal to K Q1 Q2 all over 2 squared is 4. Then this is R squared. So this becomes the expression for the force between two charges Q1 and Q2 separated by this time, two R apart. So this is the solution to that question.
This question says the ratio of electrostatic force F E to gravitational force F G between two protons each of charge E and mass M at a distance D is dash. Uh, how do we get this done? Now, um, before you solve this, consider something here. Yeah? Two things have been given there. Number one, um, electrostatic force, that's Fe, is set for two protons of charge E. So that would be K, yes, what does that now? K, my first charge would be E, my second charge will also be E. So K, Q1, Q2, all over. They said the distance apart here um, at the distance t, my distance apart here becomes d. So d squared. So this is the same idea of k q1 q2 all over r squared. But here we're using e as a charge and not just q. Alright, also the distance here as given the question was d, not r. So I'm using d here. But the same concept. From here, the electrostatic force F E is equal to K e times E is E squared all over D squared. Call this the expression for electrostatic force. Next up, let's look at expression for gravitational force, Fg. Um, Fg is equal to, now we said for um, gravitational force, which we've dealt with previously, we said um, this one deals with masses, alright? So we call G of M1, M2, all over R squared. This is from uh, gravitational law of attraction between two masses. Right, so this is the formula. It's very similar to a static force. But the difference is that for a static force, it talks about charges, while it talks about masses. For a static force, you have K as a constant. For this, we have G as a constant. Relating this to the given question, for the question we said Fg is equal to the said it has a ratio of okay between two protons. The two protons said of mass m to become G. Just as we have similar charges for the protons, of course, I will still have similar masses for the protons. So it's no longer M1, M2 becomes M for proton 1 and then M for proton 2. The distance of separation as given was D. So I have D squared, no longer R, D. The same concept. So this is now equal to G M times M is M squared all over D squared. So G M squared all over D squared. Now, We've successfully got gotten an expression for electrostatic force and gravitational force. Next up, we say the ratio of electrostatic force to gravitational force. So, therefore, the ratio, the ratio will be Fe electrostatic to Fg gravitational. Alright, if I increase value to be equal to, for electrostatic, I have this, it becomes K E squared all over D, all over gravitational, I have this, it becomes G M squared, so all over D squared, yeah? Alright, so G M squared all over D squared, so I have this. So this becomes the ratio of electrostatic force to gravitational force. I have this. I will break this down and work it up. So this can still, to, to simplify it, we can write this as saying this is equal to K E squared all over D squared divided by this one here, G M squared all over d squared. This will now be equal to k e squared all over d squared. Change here to multiplication and inverse. This is how you solve fractions.
or division of fraction. We say change the division sign to multiplication, and of course, invert this. So that's how you solve this. It becomes d squared all over g m squared. From here, this will cancel this. So that equals to k e squared all over g m squared. Of course, this is charge. It cannot cancel mass, so they can't cancel. This is k, it cannot cancel g. They can't cancel. So this becomes the ratio of the electrostatic force to the gravitational force. So this is how you solve this particular case here. So let's try yet another example on electrostatic. So um, this question says, what is the force of attraction between two charges Q1 equal to 5 microcoulomb and Q2 equal to 7 microcoulomb separated by a distance of 15 millimeters apart? Take 1 over 4 pi e naught as 9 times 10 to the power 9 Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Alright, so we have uh, this particular question. So I'm giving Q1 as 5 microcoulomb, Q2 7 microcoulomb, R as 15 millimeters, and 1 or 4 pi e naught as um, this value. Of course, this one here is a constant. We don't even have to give it. So let's solve this. So recall from the recall that we said from Cohn's law, F is equal to K Q1 Q2 all over R squared. My first task will be to do my conversion. And my conversion Q1, we said is 5 microcoulomb. That's equal to micro is times 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb. That's the first one. Q2 is equal to 7 microcoulomb. That's equal to micro is 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb. Next up, R. So R is equal to 15 millimeter. Convert this to meter, divide by 1000. That becomes 15 all over 1000. That's equal to 0 point. 0 0.15 meter. So this is the value of R in meter. 0 0.015 meter. Alright, so therefore, F is now equal to K. The value of K, we said, is, okay, writing this expression in terms of this, we said, is equal to Q1. Q2 all over 4 pi e naught r square as we have already discussed. If this is now equal to this value, uh, to make things clearer, we can say this one is equal to 1 over 4 pi e naught times Q1 Q2 all over r square. So get this done. This is equal to this value is 9 times 10 to the power 9 that's this value times q1 q2 that becomes 5 q1 is 5 times 10 to the power minus 6 q2 is 7 times 10 to the power minus 6 q1 q2 this all over r squared um, r is 0 0.015 or square. Alright, so at this point, um, F is equal to, so I'll just get the calculator and punch my answer. <coughs> so this is 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplying 5 times 10 to the power minus 6. Multiplying 7 times 10 to the power minus 6. Alright, so this is equal to 0 
one over r. This one gives you 0 0.015 squared. That gives 0 0.1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 5. So therefore, n is equal to 0 0.315 divided by 0 0.0025. That gives 1,400 in Newton. If I have this one here. So this becomes uh, my answer, 1,400 newtons. So this is how you solve this question.